Hey there everyone, Afrodo Reviews here, coming at you today with not quite a review, rather something that probably should have been published a lot sooner. But as you can tell from my voice, and probably what you'll be able to tell from my voice in future videos for a little bit, is I have not been feeling the greatest. In fact, I didn't feel that greatest before the, uh, 2023 became 2024. So you'll have to excuse me for the next few videos as I... Um, struggle to deal with sickness. But that being said, I don't want to leave you guys hanging. So I decided to make these out and put them out. And hopefully, by the time I get around to more proper reviews, well, sort of, my voice will have cleared up and you'll be able to see more proper book reviews on this channel. But this is what everyone is probably waiting for. The kind of thing that comes from every booktuber, maybe even every movie reviewer, at the time coming of the new year, where we celebrate the best and the worst of the year. Now this video is going to be the best, guys. But before we begin, allow me to remind you of the rules. This will apply to both the best and the worst, but I'll still go over it in the worst just for, just for ease. Now, first, I must have read the book for the first time last year. That year being 2023. That means as much as I enjoyed something like Rotten Rune on a reread, it's officially disqualified from the ranking on this list because I had actually read it years before and was me merely revisiting it for my own nostalgia. It does also mean, however, that the book didn't have to come out in the year of 2023, which is also good because I'm always so far behind the times when it comes to new releases that, yeah, I, uh, I would not have a list. Actually, fun fact, last year was the year that I've read the most new releases overall, although most of them admittedly were probably the Kindle Unlimited and I don't remember liking most of them, so... I would still be, I would have a lot for my worst, but anyways, finally, this the list has to include novels, books. So even if I might have enjoyed it, a great short story sometime this month, or even a comic book or a manga that I read, this will mostly be featuring novels or novellas. So I won't include them, but they will be in the honorable mentions if I feel they're worth mentioning. And I'll also put them where I would have put them on the list otherwise. But with those rules out of the way, let's begin. Number five. The Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie. Now, The Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie was my first real Agatha Christie work, and it's definitely my first Hercule Poirot work. And it's definitely a book I'm glad I picked up. Those of you who've watched my channel know that I have a mixed history when it comes to mystery novels, in that I find most disappointing for a variety of reasons. So when I picked up this book and read it, not only with it being almost 100 years old at the time of my reading, but finding it to be a decent mystery on top of that, you can say I was pleasantly surprised. Agatha Christie is known as the mistress of mystery for a good reason, and I'm sorry I ever doubted that. Murder on the Orient Express is a great read for anyone looking for a classical mystery, and though I roughly figured out the basics of the twist, I was actually somewhat caught off guard by the end. I really do commend this book, and due to the fact it's a mystery, I'm not going to say too much on it, so we'll move on to number four. Ascendant by Michael R. Miller. <clears throat> Ideally, I published the review for this book by the time I've uploaded this, so I won't go too in-depth. Spoiler alert, I haven't. However, what I will say is that this was a great return to form for me. Ascendant by Michael R. Miller was a book that caught my attention years ago with its cover alone and with it immediately inviting me into the interesting premise it promised. So when I found out that it was on Kindle Unlimited and I no longer needed to wait for the right time to buy it online, I picked it up and read it. And boy, am I glad I did. Almost like it was taking me back to my childhood, back in the days of the first reading of Aragon or Percy Jackson, Ascendant captured me and had me hooked. I found reasons to read it even while I was at work. And I practically breezed through 500 pages of this book faster than I have for some 300 pages for other books. Now obviously it wasn't perfect, but really it took me back and reminded me of how much fun reading fantasy novels was back And the, the, the characters were great, the setting was interesting, and the magic system felt fun. I even found a bit of the charm in the way the dragon powers seemed to be structured like old R RPG video game powers where Ash and Holt seem to unlock more and more powers as they level up, so to speak. And the powers seem to fit a theme. You know, the first one is a mild mild attack. The second one is an area of effect. 
The third one is the powerful mega cannon, basically. Really, it's a book I would recommend to grace the shelves of any fantasy reader at least once in their lifetime. And yeah, it was just a really good read. I'm glad I picked it up. But that moves us on to number three. Number three, Heir to the Empire by Timothy Zahn. So, for my own sake, I chose to limit the amount of Star Wars book on here only to a single book. Otherwise, my list would be too homogenous for my liking. Death Star and Med Star were both fantastic reads, with only really Rogue Planet being the disappointing man out when it comes to the EU evaluations this year. Although, admittedly, Red Harvest did come a bit closer than I would have liked. However, one of the EU books I read this year that stood far and above the others in terms of quality and enjoyment was Heir to the Empire by Timothy Zahn. A story that for a long while was considered the definitive continuation for the original series. This book follows the events of the Re of Return of the Jedi and honestly, I think so far, it's far better than what we were ultimately given in the canon. Characters are not only consistent with who they were in the original, but the story written with a sense of respect and love for the original, along with an amazing story <clears throat> and a new villain to boot. Really, even if you did enjoy the sequel trilogy, I honestly believe this book will, you will love this book and you'll think of it as a better sequel. For any Star Wars fan out there, sequel fan, for any Star Wars fans out there, sequels fans or not, I highly recommend picking up this book. It was definitely well routed as number three in my list, which comes to tell you how much I enjoyed the following two books. So, number two. The Fox Woman by Keyes Johnson. Perhaps my most sordid of the books, The Fox Woman is one of those books that I don't like admitting how long it took me to actually finish. Mostly because due to my ADHD brain, I put it down some time ago and didn't realize I had been reading it until I saw it again. But when I finally got a chance to sit there and really just finish off the book, I can promise you that this book earns that number two spot on my list. A story involving the myth of the Japanese Katsuni, this story tells the tale of a fox who falls in love with a human lord in feudal Japan. Now, I admit while reading this, I didn't know it was supposed to be based on the actual Katsuni myth in the sense. I thought it was just more of a modern take on myth using making its own story rather than taking the mythology and rewriting it. At least so the book claims, but I enjoyed it all the same. It's one of those books that asks the question of what makes someone human, and what's the dividing line between humanity and what you're willing to suffer in order to achieve it. There's a lot I enjoyed about this book, and almost every scene in the book serves to some degree further the theme. <clears throat> I felt for the characters when I was supposed to, both feeling uncomfortable when our main character essentially kidnaps someone to try to and tries to live her happy life, but also her own sadness when she can't seem to hold on to this happy life she so strongly desires. The book even uses more adult elements to it that, than just to say this book is adult. And I will say, I didn't expect the amount of LGBT representation in this book, but I highly approve of it. All in all, I highly recommend this book. Now time for some honorable mentions. Now before I give you number one, let's go over some honorable mentions. These are the books that while I love a lot, I just don't think would have made the list but would have absolutely made it if my list was on the top 10. Minecraft The End If you had told me one of the books that I would have con seriously considered putting on my top 5 books of 2023 was a Minecraft novel, I might have given you that slight <laughs> a disbelief. Sure, I wouldn't argue that maybe I would have enjoyed the book, but so much so that it fights for a place among things like The Fox Woman and Heir to the Empire, honestly, yeah, no, that seems weird, doesn't it? But having finished this read very close to the end of the year, it was super tempting to put this in place of Murder of the Orient Express. I'll definitely be holding on to this author some more and just seeing what other work she might have had. Dear Martin, Now, among the various reads I, I read, this is definitely one of the better, and the only reason it doesn't make the list is for the same reason that, although I loved the message of Handmaid's Tale, I dislike the actual book. What I mean by that is, it's a story second and a message first, which in itself is fine and, and it's talking about very important things, things I think more people should be willing to hear and more aware of. However, its story is just an excuse to talk about those things, 
the characters don't really feel fleshed out. The world doesn't really feel fleshed out. It's just there for the message. And although it conveys the message well, it's one of those I don't recommend it as a story. Which is of course why I read. Tomo-chan is a girl. A romantic comedy manga series I picked up and read. This was honestly a great read and had me laughing and smiling throughout almost all of it. Featuring complex characters and a simple premise, it really works. The only reason it was left off of this list is because of my earlier rule that this has to be a novel and not a manga, though I consider it just as good. Of course, there was also some cultural dissonance that occurs and that incest plotline, which definitely prevented me from breaking that rule as tempted as I was for this one. But yeah, that's, that's all I got. But finally, the last book of my list, the best there was that I read this year, was Yellow Face by R.F. Quang. Yellow Face by R.F. Quang is outside my normal wheelhouse when it comes to books that I've read. As a fan of fantasy and sci-fi overall, contemporary fiction generally isn't something I go out of my way to read. In addition, I've never been a strong fan of villain protagonists, and obviously from the title alone, you can tell this book has some intent to making social commentary. And as I just mentioned with Dear Martin, this often means sacrificing the story, the setting, and the characters to many of the authors. But actually, I was pleasantly surprised overall with just how much I loved the book. <clears throat> the villain protagonist walks a nice line between almost relatable to being completely unlikable, being just unreliable of a narrator that even things that might make us sympathetic also might just be fabrications of her own biased viewpoint. You don't get the feeling this character went into a downfall with the intent to do half the awful things that she ended up doing, but you also clearly see the threads that did lead to this fall earlier on in the book. In addition, as someone who wants to one day be an author himself, the scathing critique of the publishing industry was somewhat interesting to read, as the book functions more than just the social commentary on white people trying to muscle into the market of being diverse to try and draw in a reader base on false merits. There's a lot here to dissect, and through it all, the author doesn't sacrifice an interesting narrative like with Handmaid's Tale. I struggled a lot with if this was going to be my number one or it was going to be Out of the Empire. But honestly, I truly believe that this was one of the best books I read this year. And I would highly recommend to anyone interested in reading this work, though I would do the same for pretty much any book I mentioned on here. And yeah, might have been a shorter video, but I promise you guys, Next one's going to be a bit longer. With that being said, just remember, but those are the best books of this year. Those are the adventures you want to go on. Those are the adventures that are worth reading of a second breakfast. And we'll go on to next time, where, where we see what should never have been removed from Mount Doom in the first place. See you later, everyone.